Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 28 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about deleting multiple rows from Grid View Control. On this slide, you can see checkboxes in the first column of this Grid View Control. Now, users will be able to select multiple rows using these checkboxes. Once he clicks Delete, all the rows that he has selected should be deleted. Let's see how to achieve this. We'll be using TBL employee table for this demo. Obviously, to retrieve this data and then display that within the grid view control, we need employee data access layer. So let's go ahead and add employee data access layer class file to this project. And let's call this class file as employee data access layer.cs. Now, we want to retrieve and display employee related information. So obviously, to encapsulate this employee information, we need employee class. So I'm going to create a class called employee. So public class employee. And obviously, to represent these columns within the employee table, we need properties in C Sharp. So just speed, to speed things up, I have these properties already typed. So let me copy and paste these properties within that employee class. So as you can see, all of these are auto-implemented properties. They don't have special logic within them. So employee ID name, gender, and city properties to represent these four columns that we have in TBL employee table. All right, so with an employee data access layer, we need a method which is going to, you know, retrieve all these employees and then return them to whoever is going to call it. So I'm going to call this method as, you know, public static. This method is going to return list of employees back. So list of employee objects, you know, the employee object that we have just created. And then I'm going to call this get all employees. So obviously, this method, in this method, we need to write a bit of ADO.NET code. So to do that, we need some ADO.NET namespaces, system.data, system.data.sql client, and system.configuration. So let's copy and paste them there. And again, to speed things up, I have uh, you know this method already typed. So let me copy and paste that within you know, this get all employees method. And if you look at the implementation, it's again it's very straightforward. We are creating, you know, a list of employees object. And then we are using the configuration manager class to read the connection string from web.config file. And using that connection string, we are creating a SQL connection object, preparing the SQL command object. Look at the command select star from TBL employee. So we want to retrieve all these employees. And then once we execute that command, we are going to retrieve all those employees and loop through each employee row, create an employee object, and then convert the columns of each row into the properties of that C-sharp object employee in this case. And then we are adding that employee object to the list. Finally, once we are done looping through each row, we are actually returning that list back to whoever is going to call this method. All right. So this is get all employees method which we'll be using to retrieve and display the data within the grid view control so obviously we need a grid view control so let me drag and drop the grid view control onto the web form and let's auto format that let's choose brown sugar scheme click ok all right and obviously to retrieve data all you need to do is within the page load if not is post back meaning if it is the initial get request we want to retrieve the data and display within the grid view control. So within employee data access layer class, we have a method called get all employees, which is going to return a list of employees. We want that list to act as the source for this grid view control. So grid view one dot data source is equal to that. And then call the data bind method. Okay. Now, we will be needing these two lines of code at several places going forward. So I'm going to encapsulate these two lines into its own method. So I'm going to have a private method here, private void, and let's call this get data. All this method does is it's going to call, you know, get all employees, set that as the data source for the grid view, data bind. And we're going to use this method wherever we need it. Okay, at this time, if I go ahead and run this, as you might expect, all employees' data will be retrieved and displayed within the grid view control. But the important thing to keep in mind here is at the moment, we don't have any columns that defined within the grid view control at design time. Look at this, we don't have any columns defined. All these are styles. 
okay but then when the web form renders look at this it's displaying employee ID name gender and city so where are these columns within the grid view control are coming from these are auto generated depending on what you have set as the data source for this grid view control okay so but what I want to do is I want to define what columns I want at design time so I want a column for check boxes I want a column for employee ID name gender and city now we will con I mean this the first two columns that has the checkbox and employee ID these will be template fields and name gender and city will be bound fields now the reason why we are making these two are template fields you will understand them in a bit okay but remember we are going to make the first two columns as template fields and the rest of three columns name gender and city as bound fields so let's define them now okay let's close this browser window let's go back to Visual Studio and the easiest way to add our columns at design time is by using edit columns you know from grid view task so the first two columns I want them as template field so I'm going to add a template field look at this for the first template field in the header I don't have any header text so I'm not going to set anything there I'm just added the template field and I'm going to add another template field this one will display the employee ID so the header text is employee ID so for that template field I'm going to set header text property as employee ID alright and the rest of three columns are going to be bound fields name gender and city so let me add those bound fields one two and three so the first bound field is going to be name the second bound field is going to be gender and the third one is going to be city Okay. Now look at this. Employee, I mean, first column to display checkboxes, employee ID name, gender, and city. And in addition to them, I have these th other columns, you know, which I didn't define, but they are coming. So why is that? That's because this grid view control has a property called auto generate columns, which is true by default. I'm going to set that false because I don't want any columns to be auto generated. Okay. Now that solves that problem. But look at this. None of the columns here are actually data bound. So we need to bind them to data. Name, gender, and city should be, I mean, employee ID name, gender, and city should, should be bound to these properties of the employee class, employee ID name, gender, and city. Okay? And we need to specify that. And to do that, I'm going to go into columns. Okay, first let me do it for name, gender, and city because they are bound columns. We can do that within this edit fields, you know, dialog box. So here, you have a property called data field so I have selected name the data field for that is going to be name the name property of the employee object and gender data field is going to be gender and city is going to be city okay so look at what's going to happen the moment I click OK so all these are data bound employee ID is not data bound uh, let's try to data bind employee ID if I click edit columns look at this employee ID is a template field now do I have data field property here no why is that because for a template field you need to define your templates only then will you be able to bind you know data bind that column okay so first let's define the templates you know the item template or header template you know whatever templates that we require okay now if you look at this slide here look at the first column in the within the header template we need a checkbox control as well so we need to define header template and then item template in every grid view draw you know we need checkbox control and within the header template I mean header also we need a checkbox so we need to define header template and item template for the first column of the grid view so let's do that so let me go to the grid view control edit templates and then I'm going to define the header template for the first column column 0 so that's going to be a checkbox there so let me drag and drop a checkbox control and then let's give this checkbox a meaningful name because we are going to refer to that a little while later so I'm going to go to the properties of the checkbox control and then I'm going to call this CB for checkbox and this is this checkbox is present in the header and it's used for delete purposes so I'm going to call this checkbox delete header okay so that's the first thing and the second thing I'm, I'm going to set auto post back property to true that's because you know anytime I select this uh, checkbox within the header all the other checkboxes should be selected 
and also the web form should automatically post back to the server so I'm gonna set auto post back to true and the third thing I'm going to generate an event handler for this so double click the event handler I know checkbox so checked changed event of that checkbox is generated all right so that's the header template now I need to also define item template because you know within the grid view data rows we again need checkbox so let's define another checkbox here and I'm going to call this let's give it a meaningful ID since this is used for deleting purposes so I'm going to call this checkbox simply delete and I'm going to set the auto post back to true for this as well and then let's generate the event handler for this checkbox also alright so that's for the first column in the second column we need to display employee ID and then you know in the header we have only header text we have already defined that we need employee ID within the grid view rows and then we want to display the employee ID within a label control so my item template in this employee ID column is going to be a label control so let's go ahead and define that so that has to be employee ID column and I want to define item template so I'm going to select that I need a label there so let's drag and drop a label control and let's give this label a meaningful name I'm going to call this LBL employee ID okay and then let's get rid of this default text label and at this stage let's end the template editing now look at this we got the checkboxes as expected but look at employee ID it's not saying it's data bound why is that because we have just defined an item template that's label but you haven't set the text property you know to any of the data fields but for the bound field if you look at this data field is equal to name data field is equal to gender but how do I do it for a template here you know we have slightly different syntax again you can data bind this label directly here within the HTML or you can use the designer let's actually use the designer so I want to edit templates and which template do I want to edit I want to edit item template of employee ID template field so I'm going to select that and then I want to bind this to data so if I actually right click on that and if I go to properties look at this I have edit data bindings here and the moment I click so I'm setting the text property of this label to a custom binding expression so I want to bind this to employee ID property of the employee object so I'm going to say bind employee ID that's it click OK so it's going to write the code for us automatically let's end template editing look at that now it says data bound the employee ID also and then if we flip the web form to the source mode look at this item template label text property is set to angle brackets percentage hash and it's binding to employee ID property of the data source what is the data source for this grid view go control going to be it's going to be this list of employees and this employee object has got employee ID column to which this label within this template field is binding to All right okay so at this point if I go ahead and run this as you might expect you know the employees data will be displayed along with the checkboxes so one step is done so we are now able to display checkboxes but when I select any of these look at this when I select the checkbox within the header what should happen all these checkboxes should be selected but at the moment that doesn't happen because we haven't written any code there so let's implement that first alright so if you look at you know that's the checkbox within the header and if you remember the ID of that is checkbox delete header and then we also have generated an event handler for that checkbox delete header checked changed so whenever we change the selection you know uh, this event is going to be fired and at that point what do I want to do I basically want to let me actually copy this code and paste it there and then I shall explain what it is doing okay so look at this one this is the event handler for this checkbox within the header so whenever the checked status changes this event handler is raised and look at this parameter sender what does sender mean sender is nothing but this checkbox so if this checkbox is checked we want all of these checkboxes to be checked if this is unchecked 
all of them to be unchecked okay and to do that look at that I'm using the sender property we know that sender is nothing but the control which has raised the event in this case the checkbox control that is present in the header okay so that you know we are retrieving the checked status of that so this checked property is going to return true if the user has checked the checkbox otherwise it returns false so if I am checked you know that is going to return true and look at what we are doing here we are looping through each grid view row in grid view one dot rows okay each grid view row and then look at what we are doing within that grid view row we are using this find control method and we are finding a control with ID CB delete so what is CB delete checkbox delete and if you remember that's nothing but the ID of the checkbox control that is present within the item template meaning all these checkboxes okay so when I check this checkbox I want to retrieve its checked status and then set that status for each checkbox within every row of this grid view one control and that's what essentially this one line of code is doing here so in grid view row find a control with CB delete and then obviously find control will return a control back but we are expecting a checkbox back so we are converting that to be of type checkbox and then the checked status of that control should be equal to whatever is the checked status of the sender who is sender sender is nothing but the checkbox in the header row okay so simple one line of code here but doing lot of things okay so now if I run this with this change what's gonna happen whenever the uh, you know checked status of the checkbox in the header changes you know it's gonna change everything else as well look at this I selected it all of them are selected I uncheck that all of them are un unselected very simple and straightforward all you need to understand is the way to retrieve you know the checked uh, the checkbox in the header and the checkbox within every grid view row okay in the header if you want to retrieve the checkbox you know this event is raised by the checkbox within the header control so I'm using the sender property in this event handler to typecast it to you know checkbox type and then within the each grid view row we have this CB delete checkbox I am finding that using find control method okay pretty straightforward alright the next thing that we need to understand here is see uh, if we check the checkbox header I mean the check checkbox in the header you know it works as expected but the problem is look at this I have it checked now if I uncheck this this should automatically be if any one of the grid view rows is unselected then this should be automatically unselected but look at this at the moment it is not unselected in spite of unchecking everything it is still selected so obviously whenever the selection in these checkbox changes okay if all of them are checked then that should be automatically checked even if one of them is unchecked this should automatically become unchecked the checkbox within the header let's see how to achieve that obviously in order to write code for that we will write that in CB delete underscore checked chain so when is this event handler fired whenever the selection within the checkboxes within grid view row changes and if you look at the ID of that checkbox it's CB delete and then look at the event handler CB delete underscore checked change okay so we will write that code here and again to speed things up I have that already typed so let me copy here we have a bit of code but it's again the same concept here now here if you remember the sender is going to be the checkbox within the grid view row okay so what are we doing here we're actually first getting a reference to the checkbox control that is present in the header so how do I get a reference to the checkbox control that is present in the header grid view one dot header row dot find control and within the header row the ID of the checkbox control is CB delete header and then we are typecasting that to checkbox so I have the header checkbox so if the header checkbox is checked so if the header checkbox is checked then what do you want to do if the sender so this event handler is raised whenever you know any of these checkboxes are, are you know the checked status of the checkboxes within these grid view rows is changed that's when this event handler will be uh, you know this event handler will handle that event 
So sender here is going to be the checkbox within the grid view row. Okay, so what we are doing here, we are finding the status of the sender and then the checked status of the sender and then we are setting that as the checked status of the header checkbox. So if it is checked and if I uncheck the checkbox within the grid view row, we, will, we are using that status to automatically uncheck that. On the other hand, if the header checkbox is not checked, so if the header checkbox is not checked, that means either none of these checkboxes are selected or all of them are selected but one is not selected or only a few are selected and, and a few of them are not selected. Okay, so in which case what we want to do, I'm creating a variable here. So we will come to the cells block if header checkbox is not checked. Okay, so we are creating a variable all checkboxes checked which is true. Okay, and then we are looping through each grid view row, each row. And then we are finding the control which is checkbox delete. So we are retrieving this checkbox and then we are checking, okay, if, at, if the checkbox in those rows is not checked, meaning if any of it is not checked, that's when we will get inside this block. And then what are we doing? We are saying all checkboxes checked is equal to false. Okay, even if one checkbox is not checked, that's when it will get inside this if block, in which case we are setting this you know, private field to false and then we are breaking out of that because there's no point in looping through the rest of the rows because we know for sure at least one checkbox is unchecked. If that's the case, you know, this will be false and we are saying checked header checkbox dot checked is equal to unchecked. So the header checkbox will remain unchecked. On the other hand, if, you know, if it doesn't get into this block at all, then we know for sure the user has selected everything and he has selected even the last one that is unchecked in which case it will never get into this block and then all checkboxes checked will be true in which case we are checking the checked status of the header checkbox to true okay pretty simple and straightforward so now this is going to handle the reverse case okay in the checkboxes that are present in the grid view rows if i keep on selecting them. Look at this. When I select one, two, three, four, five, and when I select this one, look at what's going to happen. It automatically selected this. Okay. If I uncheck one, it will be automatically selected. On the reverse, if I select the header, look at that. Everything is selected. If I uncheck that, all of them are. So at least, you know, the selection of these checkboxes is working right now. All right, so the next thing, obviously, we need a delete button. So that's going to be simple. So let's drag and drop a delete button onto this web form. And let's change the text to delete. And I'm going to call this BTN delete. And then to display, you know, how many rows we have deleted, whether two rows or five rows or all rows, you know, I'm going to have a label control to have the status displayed. So let's drag and drop a label control. And I'm going to get rid of this default text here. And I'm going to set font bold is equal to true. And let's give it a meaningful ID. This is going to display some message. So I'm going to set that LBL message. And then obviously, when we click that button, delete, you know, we want to delete the rows that the user has selected. All right. So obviously, let's run this now. At the moment, when we click that button, not, nothing is going to happen. But, you know, once we have selected these rows, and then when I click that delete button, what should happen? We should loop through all the rows, whatever checkbox is checked. You know, we need to retrieve those employee IDs and then delete them from the table. Okay, but now nothing happens. So let's see how to achieve that. Again, to speed things up, I have this already typed. So let me copy that and paste it within that. So at the moment, again, if you look at this one, I have a simple list of strings variable, list employee IDs to delete. So I'm going to use this variable to keep track of what are the employee ID IDs that I'm going to delete. And look at this, what are we doing? We are looping through each grid view row okay each grid view row 
and within the grid view row we are using again the find control method find cb delete so if you remember within each grid view row there is an item template and within that we have a checkbox delete so basically we are retrieving this checkbox within each row of the grid view control and then if that checkbox is checked then what we need to do we need to retrieve the employee ID okay so we are again saying grid view one in the same row find control with ID LBL employee ID and if you remember employee ID is also a template field and within that this label LBL employee ID is going to contain employee ID so this employee ID that is displayed here is coming from that label control so we are retrieving that label and then using the text property of that label to retrieve the employee ID so we are saying grid view one dot find control LBL employee ID again find control will return a control back but we know it's a label so we are typecasting it to be of type label and then we are using the text property okay to store into this variable and then we are basically adding that employee ID to the list and then what are we doing if list of employee IDs to delete is greater than zero so obviously if I have not selected anything and then if I try to click this button there are no employee IDs selected but if I have selected one two or three I have three selected in which case this list of employee um, employee IDs to delete count will be greater than zero in that case we are setting the full color to navy and then LBL message dot text you know we are saying whatever is the count convert that to string plus rows deleted so if I have three rows three rows will be deleted that's what is the message the label displays but at the moment we are not deleting any employees okay we don't have code for that we'll be writing that in a bit if the employees count is not greater than zero then we know for sure you know no rows are selected in which case we are setting the full color of the label to red no rows selected to delete so now with this change if we go ahead and run as you might expect what's going to happen we will have you know if I don't select anything I click delete look at that no rows selected to delete the message comes as expected but if I select one two three and I select that three rows deleted but they're not actually deleted because we have not returned the code we have just displayed that message so obviously to delete um, from the table we need a delete method within the employee data access layer okay so let's actually add that method so I'm going to add another static method here let's call that public static this is not going to return anything but I'm going to call this delete employees and it's going to take in employee ID okay so obviously we need to write some adio.net code here again so let me copy this and then we'll modify it as required so configuration manager we are reading the connection string preparing the SQL connection object so this one is going to be delete from TBL employee where employee ID is equal to at employee ID so we are going to use a parameterized query to avoid SQL injection attacks okay so obviously we need to supply a value for that parameter so let's create a SQL parameter and we need to supply a name and a value for that so parameter dot parameter name is equal to you know at employee ID that we have just created and a value so parameter dot value where is the value coming from it's coming into this method as a parameter so that's what we'll use there and open the connection and this is going to be a non query because insert update and delete uh, you know we are not getting anything back so it's a non query so execute non query right so we don't need all this so let's get rid of that one 
we are not going to return anything back so all right so we don't even need the sql uh, data reader object so let's get rid of that as well okay so with this change and here we need to call that employee data access layer deletes method so I'm going to say employee data access layer dot delete employees and we need to pass an employee ID okay so what I'm going to do here I'm going to so for each because look at this this list contains the string of employee IDs to be deleted so I'm going to say for each string str employee ID in that list employee IDs to delete so we are retrieving each employee ID from this list and then we are going to call that employee data access layer dot delete employees and you need to pass in employee ID uh, of type integer but this is of type string so we need to convert that to integer so let's do that convert dot to in 32 and let's say str employee ID that's it so now let's run this and as you might expect once we select these employees let's say I selected one and three click delete uh, must declare the variable at employee ID So where do we have the error? Command dot must declare the scalar variable uh, variable at employee ID. So maybe we have not set the parameter name in employee data access layer. Let's check that. Delete from TPL employee where employee ID is equal to at employee ID. Yep, we have created the parameter object, but we didn't add it to the command object. So let me add that command dot parameters dot add and that's our parameter object so that's the reason why it's complaining okay um, I'm expecting a parameter but I don't have a value alright so now we should be able to delete this rows let's say one and three I click that look at that two rows deleted but the strange thing here is it's not refreshing the grid view control why is that that is because we have not binded rebinded the data to the grid view control after we have deleted the data so here we should call that method um, what's that method we called bind get data so let's call that private method get data so this should actually you know rebind the data to the grid view control okay look at that you know only those um, the one and three rows are deleted let's select four and six I click delete look at that they are deleted now let me select everything and then click that look at that two rows deleted okay let's insert the data back now the problem with this code that we have just written is look at this what are we doing here we have written this employee data access layer delete employees method you know you're passing one employee ID at a time and then you know you're calling this delete employee method within data access layer now let's say within your grid view control you have 200 rows and if you want to delete all those 200 rows this delete employees method will be called 200 times and this query will be executed 200 times so there will be a lot of traffic between your web server and database server so this is not really good in terms of performance instead why don't we you know have all the employee IDs in, in uh, you know in a string and then send those employee IDs to the data access layer method and then let it use an in clause you know to execute one query at a time for you know 
delete from TBL employees where employee ID in one comma two comma three comma four comma five you know even if you have 200 it's just going to be one query with employee ID separated by comma using the in clause you know that's much better for the performance okay so obviously in order to achieve that I have created a method here so let's copy and paste this again just to speed things up so within our employee data access layer I'm going to change the definition of this method instead of taking in one employee ID at a time I'm going to take list of employees so here I'm going to have list of string and then instead of one employee ID I'm going to pass employee IDs, a list of string. So what are we doing here? The same idea. Read the connection string from web.config, prepare your SQL connection object. Look at your in clause, you know. I'm setting it to empty. And then I'm looping through each employee ID in that list. Okay? Look at this employee IDs. It's a, it's a list of strings. So look through each string in that employee IDs. And what are we doing? We are you know appending whatever we have you know we'll retrieve if I have one comma two comma three you know I, I will retrieve one plus and then I, we are appending a comma so one comma two comma three so we are preparing you know a comma delimited string with employee IDs and then obviously in the end there will be a comma so we need to remove that so we are using the remove um, function to remove that comma in the end and then once I have that str, I mean the in clause, the comma separated list of employee IDs, what are we doing? We are building this command dynamically. Delete from TBL employee where employee ID in, look at that. We are concatenating this string with this string to form the query. So this will be delete from TBL employee where employee ID in, one comma, two comma, three comma, whatever. Okay, depending on how many ever employees you have selected in the grid view control. And then I just, you know, we are just executing, preparing that SQL command object. Um, we are opening the connection and then executing the query. Now, this, you know, is good from performance. So this is going to work as expected. Uh, it's going to actually have, yeah, obviously we'll get an error because we have changed the delete employees method within the employee data access layer, but we have not changed that within the place where we are calling it. So I can get rid of this right now and I can simply say employee data access layer dot delete employees and then to this pass the list. So where is our list of employees? This is the list that contains our employee IDs, list of strings. So I'm going to pass that. Now we run this. It's going to work as expected but the problem with this method is that we are building queries dynamically by concatenating strings. So if you look at the delete employees method here, we are building the query by concatenating these strings. And we have spoken about the dangers of building queries by concatenating strings. You know, it opens up doors for SQL injection attack. Okay, so this is better from a performance, but then from a security perspective, this is very, very dangerous. Okay, we should not ever be, you know, we should never ever be concatenating strings to form queries. So now I select these and I click delete. It's going to delete all of them as expected. It works. But from a performance, uh, from a security point, it's very bad. So we shouldn't be concatenating strings to form queries. Okay, so obviously the best way from performance and from security is this version of delete employees method. So let me copy this and paste it here and then we'll go over the code. So within the, again, what are we doing here? We are, okay, let me copy that, paste it there. So we are reading the connection string from web.config file. This doesn't change, preparing the SQL connection object. Look at this here. This is what is important. So I'm getting list of employee IDs. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, add parameters depending on the number of employees that I want to delete. For example, if I want to delete one, two, and three three employees then I'm going to you know say delete from TBL employee where employee ID in at parameter 0 at parameter 1 at parameter 3 so I'm going to have three parameters in my in class one for each employee ID that I want to delete because converting a list of strings 
into n clause is not that easy. That's why we are using this trick here. So I am using the employee IDs, the list of strings, and I'm basically forming another, you know, list of strings called parameters. Okay, another list of string. Basically, what we are doing here is I'm going to this piece of line here. You know, this is going to be converted into a list of strings, and that list will contain at parameter 0, at parameter 1, at parameter 2. If I have three employee IDs I have selected, you know, to delete. So I will have here three, you know, parameters. Parameter 0, parameter 1, parameter 2. And then look at what I'm I doing here. I am joining, you know, a comma with these parameters in the in clause. Okay, so parameter zero comma parameter one comma parameter two. So delete from TBL employee where employee ID in at parameter zero comma parameter one comma parameter I mean in parameter zero to three. Okay, and then what are we doing? The delete command text. You know this this is the delete command text. Okay, so we are preparing our command object and and this is what is interesting here. So we have three parameters because I wanted three employees to be deleted for example so I have three parameters at parameter 0 at parameter 1 and at parameter 2 and then for each parameter now we need to attach a value so we are saying command dot parameters dot add with value so to this command we need to specify values for those parameters so parameters of i so we need to obviously specify look at the IntelliSense here so the parameter name is parameter of i, parameter of 0, employee IDs of 0. So this list is going to contain, you know, three employee IDs that I want to delete. So this is going to be the parameters uh, list is going to contain the parameter names and this list is going to contain parameter values which we are adding to this command object. And remember we have already built this command string, I mean the command object here, delete from TBL employees where employee ID in, the in clause is going to contain comma delimited list of parameter names, you know, in the format of at parameter 0, 1, 2, 3, depending on the number of employee IDs that you want to delete. Okay, a little bit tricky one. I, I mean, if you want to understand this properly, what I would say is put a breakpoint here and watch the values of each variable as you debug it. You'll be able to understand that better. better. Okay, obviously converting uh, a list into, you know, an in clause for a query is a little bit tricky. Now we are doing this in this way uh, just to, you know, uh, to be good in terms of performance as well as security. So this is much better than the other two previous versions of delete method that we have seen. All right, so with this now, if we run this, it works you know, there's going to be only one query and it's also good from SQL injection perspective because we are using parameterized queries. So let's insert data and let's refresh this page. And let's say I want to select one and you know, those three. So three rows deleted. So it's, it works as expected. All right. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.